In the classroom, we will have an area where you can get scratch paper to use as your paint tray. We will have the color wheels. There will be an example color wheel, and then there will be the color wheels that you fill out. In a different location, there will be a container that you can put water in, brushes, and then also you need a paper towel or a dry rag. There will be a separate location for the paint. You will go ahead and take the paint container to your spot squirt out the amount that you need, and then very important, the containers always go back in the original carrying space. Uh, I start to get grumpy at you if you leave them at your tabletop. Then the first thing you'll need to do, and I'll be doing this in Sharpie so that you can see it, you'll want to use a pencil, is you need to put your first name and your last name, do that right now for me please, onto your color wheel. You will need to put your class period and the student number that I assigned you in the class. Then, using one of these sample color wheels on here, it tells you what a color, a hue, a tint, and a tone, and a shade are. I need you to pause this video and fill out that section. Once you've filled out your color wheel, I do need you to make a small change. It told you that tint, tone, and shade were all made by mixing a color, plus either black, white, or gray. That's not true. Color is what we call anything. So pink is a color, red's a color, black's a color. It's just our distinctive name to describe something that our eye sees as a change in either the hue, the value, or the intensity. But hue is the name of the actual color itself. So red, for example, is a hue, or any of the um, outside of the color wheel. Those are all hues. To get a tone or a tint or a shade, you are mixing a hue with either white, gray, or black. So please cross off or erase color and write in the word hue. Then we're gonna go step by step through this list. So the next thing you need to do is you need to write out all the names of the colors. So you start with red and then move your way on around so that you get the red, orange, orange, yellow, orange. You'll wanna pause your video to do that now. I need you to take 30 seconds, pause this video, and carefully read the scoring guide. All right, once you are all done and ready to clean up, uh, your brush is just gonna go back into the water. You clean the brush at your spot, just like you have been. So you rinse it out, and then you also need to dry your brush onto your paper towel or your rag. If you have a rag, your rag needs to be returned to the dirty bin. Then, if I zoom out here, your entire paint palette, this is the tricky part. The reason we have you do it on paper is so that you never have to clean a paint tray. So take your paint palette and you want to fold it in half so that it's squishing together and then kind of fold it in half again so it's all the paint is stuck inside here. Once this is done, take it directly to the trash can. Then your color wheel itself, you will be assigned a location in class where to put it. So put your color wheel away. Once your color wheel is put away, it's really important that your tabletop get cleaned off so that there's no paint on your tabletop. And then the paint generally stains. So the very last thing you're gonna do is clean your hands. And once your hands are clean, then you can take off your paint shirt. If you get paint on your clothing, uh, what you want to do is you want to put in some of that Gojo soap. It won't get the paint stain out, but by putting the soap in it, it will prevent it from setting in, and then you can go home and wash it. Uh, Dawn dish soap happens to be the thing that I've found the most success, and then just don't dry it until the stain is out. So sometimes you have to wash it three or four times, uh, and that should help take care of the problem. If you have any other questions or concerns, please let me know.